What's up guys, an average recon here. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you my update two of my Minecraft remake. Here it is. It's weird that the uh, screenshot's gone, but okay. Anyway, let's go over what is new. There is a better uh, block guide the icons are now movable. There's an inventory system. I added fence, and you can now fly. I added a lot. And it's awesome. It works so well. As you can see right now, the guide works, I'm, I'm going to say perfectly. Like, it cannot get any better. The guide is perfect. I'm so glad I stumbled, stumbled upon... Uh, how to draw the box where I wanted to. Basically, I I just drew a box where a cube was, and and it works. So it still works. Like everything, I can still place cubes and delete cubes and good stuff like that. But this is what's new. Or here's another thing that's new. You press I, and an inventory pops up. Now it doesn't look completely awesome right now, but hopefully I can make it so the icons uh, snap to it, like two boxes or something. But right now it's just free floating. And I think there's one more glitch where you can pick up, yeah, you can pick up two at the same time. That's unfortunate. To fix it, you just do this. But <laughs> I'll fix that later. It works perfectly. It, you can drag and drop. If you hover over, it doesn't pick up additional ones, if that makes any sense. Um, if you let go, they don't swap. Unfortunately, the icons do not swap places. If I can figure that out, I will definitely do it. Uh, but for now, this will work. It, um, if you drop an icon where it's not allowed to, it snaps back to the last like allowed location. And it works anywhere. It's, it works really well. So let's put the fence down here. Let's check out fence. If I can... There we go. Uh, green, that'll work. I'm going to lay down some grass. Let's put the fence down. So basically what I did was I made a, a non-collidable visible fence and I put it inside of a block now I had to do this because the ray casting you cannot ray cast a a block that isn't collidable it has to be collidable and it was uh, since the fence isn't a perfect cube the ray casting was being messed up so these block these this fence it looks really great but the fence is literally just a cube. So, and you, you see how um, the extra, like, the, the, how the fence connects. It, it connects really well, it's awesome. So, check this out. This green cube and the fence is the same thing. Watch how I go against it. Um, in Minecraft, you would, like, get stuck, but in this, you just, like, slide right across. And that's due to the fact that the fence is a cube. The fence is not na more narrow than the cube. But whatever. So let's continue. What else is there? Um, you can fly. <laughs> Press shift and you can fly. It's a lot easier to build as... Uh, oh my god, what's his name? Well, someone in the comments pointed this out. That, I sh that it would be really easy to build if I could fly. And he's right. Uh, let's builds a door. Oh. Shoot. Alright there. Yeah, so as you can see, this works really well. Um, I have got the foundation completely down. It's relatively easy for me to add new items. Um... Hopefully in the future I'll add a free 
oh my god, a free build mode and a survival mode, or if not survival, just like a zombie mode or something, which would be awesome. And let's finish the house off with the red. And let's just add the roof. Uh, once I finish the house, I'll show you the code. If you don't want to see the code, I understand because it is ridiculously complicated. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty complicated. I mean, it it's it was not easy to uh, figure figure out all the inventory system and stuff because it it seems kind of easy, right? I mean. All you do is create the picture, and when you drag it onto the square, and then the square is selected, uh, you place that block. But there's a lot more to it. There, it, it seems sort of easy uh, at first, like when you're first thinking about it, but once you try to build it, you will realize how challenging building an inventory system is. Like, in Project Spark, it would be so nice if um, you, can, you could sense if your mouse was touching, like, was inside an area. It would be so much easier. But instead, you have to, uh, you have to specify which, like, <laughs> it's crazy which vec which uh coordinates your mouse is in between so it's so it's it's dumb they, they don't give you any tools to help you make a ui at all you have to do it all uh, manually like i can't say when i click while the mouse is touching this icon the icon moves with the mouse i can't say that I I had to do something else. I had to do it from scratch, basically. Because you're not able to sense when the mouse, or when anything, on the 2D, on the display interface, you, you can't sense if anything is touching at all. Even though you really should be able to. Anyway, here's the house. Looking pretty good. Oh, let's... No, we don't need a window. I'm gonna. This is going to be the uh, thumbnail if I can move. Oh, I'm walking right now. To get, if you're flying and then you press shift again, you'll walk again. And if you just press space, you'll jump out of it quite literally. Uh, all right, this is going to be the thumbnail. So guys, uh, thanks for listening to me. <laughs> thanks for watching me build this house. If you want to see the code, here it is. There is a lot to go over, so let's let's just get into it. As you can see, I have uh, made the names of everything show up, so I can personally remember what the heck they're for, and I just press C on accident, sorry. Alright. Uh, oh boy. Let's start with the character. Okay. So in the character, I have put in the movement controls. This is how he flies. When shift is pressed, flying is switched. And then when flying is false, he's walking. When flying is true, he's flying. That's pretty simple. Well, let's get into the more complicated stuff. This I already showed the, uh, last video. This is how the cubes are placed. Um, For the... For the block guide, that's that's a good thing to go over next. Every three frames, if a, if the detected cube, what the raycast is hitting, is equal to something, it creates the guide cube where the regular cube would be placed, if that makes any sense. And this is the guide cube. It is just an invisible 
not collidable cube. And all I did was press draw box. And it draws the box like perfectly around the cube. I, this was so lucky that I stumbled upon this, but I'm, I'm glad that I did. And after three frames, it gets destroyed. So it's constantly ref uh, refreshing the place where, where the cube should be, where you're aiming. All right, what's next? So that's the uh, new guide cube. Um, there's nothing really new in the character. Everything that's new is uh, down down here. Oh, okay. So this is the inventory. This is quite simple. When you press I, it goes to page two. And while at page two, um, the meter is actually the inventory. That that's what the background is. It's just a meter. Uh, the location is basically the center, a little higher than the center. And then mouse, yeah, you need that. And that's all this does. This basically just makes the inventory pop up. Ooh, I don't need this anymore. I, I don't need to display the mouse position. I'll keep it anyway, why not? Alright, um... Let's go over this. The bar selector. The bar is the lower bar where your eight uh, cubes, eight icons can be placed. What does this do? Right, so um, on page one, you select square one. Page two, you select, or I'm sorry, box two. Page three, box three. I already showed this though. Uh, switch by, right, switch by numbers. That just switches the, the bar using the numbers <laughs> and the picture location yeah that I, I showed that last time but this is the new stuff so this code is all the same all um so th these three boxes are the same for every single cube except they're like personally customized for each cube so let's see uh cube on bar overlap prevention right so in this cube, um, it tells me, or tells the other code basically, if, if the cube is on the uh, lower bar, and if it is, oh no, it, this does not tell it which box it is on. But this is very helpful because um, it, it prevents another cube from being dropped on an occupied box. Because if that happened, that would be bad. Very bad. Um, right, so basically, if, if the blue cube icon is equal to box one, box one is occupied. And that's the same for every, uh, every box. And then this is the same for every cube. So let's check out the icon display. Uh, this code, all it does is dictate, it, it tells uh, the icon when to display. So the icon only displays when the inventory page is 2. So when the inventory is open, because when the inventory is open, the icon has to be showing up. It, it has to be either in the, it's either in the inventory or it's on the bar. And either... If it's on either one and the inventory is open, it's going to show up. Now, if the inventory isn't open, but, or else, um, the icon is on the bar, then it's also going to display. Now, if the inventory is closed and the icon is in the inventory, the icon is not going to display. And that's all this code does. Oh, one more thing. It also sets the original position. It sets where it's going to start. So I could set this in the inventory, and it would start in the inventory, not the bar, or not box one. And again, that is the same for every single cube, except uh, the green starts on box two, and the red starts on box three. And this, this is actually different, I believe. Right, this starts in the inventory. I just set it to the same location as the inventory. And then I made it so um, the on, on bar is false. 
in, in the inventory is true. I don't actually use this. This does nothing for now, but it will in the future. Since it's uh, since on the bar is false, and the inventory is closed, then it's going to not then it's not going to show up when you start the game, and it and it doesn't. And now the final uh, new code addition. This is this is the part that took the longest, in my opinion. Actually, it all took uh, quite a long time to figure out. Ah, here it is. So, starts on page one. When the inventory gets put to page two, this gets switched to page two, and the mouse shows up. The mouse shows up because some other reason. Uh, I believe because you turn off the camera, turn off the player camera. But anyway, so first, when the page is entered, uh, is dragging is equal to false. So is dragging is if I'm dragging an icon. So when the inventory is first popped up, I'm not dragging an icon. So this is false. Uh, current page is equal to Right, when the inventory when the inventory goes back to page one, this also goes back to page one. So this code right here. If the mouse's position x is greater than the blue icon's position x minus point point zero three, and then that three more times only different uh, vectors coordinates. Sorry. What this does is it basically makes a point zero six box around the center of the blue cube icon and when my mouse is in that box and then I click uh, when, when my mouse is in that box is dragging is false and yeah and in, is dragging is false it sets the previous location to this location and and then once I left click, so once I uh, basically pick up the icon, it turns to page three. Now this is going to take a little while to load. Just check out this delay. This page has a lot of code, but it's a lot of repeated code, sort of repeated. So I'll only go over the first, like, two. When the page is entered, is dragging is equal to true. And when the left mouse, sorry, when the left mouse button is being pressed down, so it goes into the page because it's pressed down. And when it is continued to be pressed down, the blue cube, the blue cube icon, uh, is the mouse position. So that basically makes the icon follow the mouse when uh, left click is pressed down. Now, when you release and the mouse position is this, this is the box of the inventory. So when you release the last left mouse button, when the mouse position is over top of the inventory, the blue cube icon is just where you leave it. So this creates the effect where um, it's like a drag and drop. You can you can set it anywhere in the inventory and it'll just stick there. And then blue cube um, icon on bar, right, so the blue, blue cube icon on bar is equal to false because it's in the inventory and blue cube icon in inventory is equal to true. And then it switches back to page two, where it waits for you to click down again. Alright, so this code, when you're holding onto the icon, and then you release, when the mouse is over box one. So when it's over box one, box it, when it's over box one and you release, and box one occupied is equal to false. So when there's nothing, when there's no um, icon already in box one, and you release the blue, and you release your mouse, your left mouse button while the mouse is over box one, 
the blue cube icon is equal to box one. And then uh, blue cube icon in inventory is equal to false, and blue cube icon on bar is equal to true. And then it switches to page two. Now this code is repeated for every single box, as you can see. Now at the end, when you release your mouse button, and it's not in the inventory, and it's not over one of the boxes, the blue cube icon, uh, its location, is equal to the blue cube icon's previous location. So if you drag and drop it where it does not belong, it just snaps back to the last location. And then it switches to page two. So this code um, is Again, in every single cube, only it for each cube it's like personalized. I, you know what I mean. And that is that's how the inventory works. It took a while to figure this out, but I'm really glad I did because, in my opinion, this is this is probably the best inventory system on Project Spark, and I I can confidently say that. Um, it, it's awesome. It, it works really, really well. And then it's just right back there. Um, the one thing, the only thing I'm going to add to this, and this is not a priority at all, is to make the icons in the inventory snap to a grid. I have no, I, I have no clue how I would do this. Um at all. I'll, I'll have to brainstorm more. But anyway, like, so a grid, like, it would be like this, kind of. I kind of, I guess I could, yeah, I probably could make it. But the thing is, it would, it would take a while to, to type out every single, every single coordinate for the grid. That, that would take a while and it would be really boring but anyway I, I think I actually could do this so for next video uh, next video it's gonna be a good one uh, this one I thought was a huge update next one I'm going to be adding tools so pickaxe a shovel a sword and eh, I can add an enemy that shouldn't be too hard but yeah tools so there's going to be a, like, it's going to take time to destroy blocks. I know, I'll add tools and a uh, free mode, a, a creative mode. So in the survi survival, quote-unquote, mode, there will be tools, there will not be flying, and th there, there will still be unlimited blocks, but um, not, not forever. And then maybe I could make like a creative mode where there is flying and you destroy everything instantly. That, that would be pretty cool. But yeah, at the, at the bare minimum, <laughs> honestly that probably won't happen next update, but at the bare minimum, uh, sorry, at the bare minimum I'm going to be adding tools. So hopefully it works. Oh, I'm sure it'll work. Just hopefully it won't take too long. Uh, guys, this was a longer video, but that's because I had a ton to cover. Oh, I just remembered. One last thing. Kind of funny. Kind of really frustrating. Oh, two listings. Wow, I just remembered. Sorry. Um, I can't keep this, this model of fence because it uses so many... Uh, primitives, so many objects, props, that if I place too many, I hit the prop limit. If I place like 30, 30 of these fence, I hit the prop limit. And that's, that's unacceptable. So I'm going to have to actually change this model. It's probably not going to look as good. I'm going to use the uh, pillars. But, <laughs> so en enjoy this uh, fence while it lasts. Right. The other thing... I completely forgot about this. I'm going to add tools, and I'm going to add um, 
so the visual effect of you holding what you're about to place. So you're going to, you'll be equipping, let's say the gray block before you place it. it it's going to be completely visual, but it, it'll really add to the Minecraft effect. You know, yeah, it'll make it look a lot like Minecraft because right now you're just a floating camera basically. And when you hold what you're about to place, it really looks, it looks better. Oh, look at that. I hit the prop limit. <laughs> I, I can't place, oh, yes, I can. It, it's lagging a lot, though. Hold, hold on, I'm going to try to hit the prop limit. It's lagging. It's, it's getting really slow. There we go, hit it, finally, holy crap. So as you can see, I place this fence down, these blocks down, and I've hit the prop limit. And that's just, that's not acceptable. So I'm going to have to, uh, oh geez. Oh, uh, the, the guide, the cube guide is hitting, is making me hit the prop limit. That's really funny actually. Here, there, now then I'll stop freaking out. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh. So, yeah, I'm going to have to change the fence model, unfortunately. But, yeah, so that's kind of like one step backward. But it's all right. It's all right. Hopefully Team Dakota will raise the prop limit so I can actually make make this look nice. But, guys, if you've watched the whole video, I applaud you. That's That's awesome. I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely stay tuned for the next update. Tools and the visual effect of you carrying what you're placing. See you guys later.